There we go. Okay, so the talk is about 2022, of course. We're going to take a numerological um, look at 2022. Um, it'll be about humanity. We're talking about humanity here, the whole all of us being one, because the whole point is that we are one. So what we have in the 2000 millennium, we, we've, we've, 22 years ago, we crossed a, a kind of uh, bridge, if you like, into a new way of looking at things with that new millennium we've come into. And the whole thing was, you've got all that potential behind the two. That's what our numbers are doing. So it's like, there we are, I'll show you a slide with that on it too. But we're looking at, because we're in the first part of this millennium, we're only just 22 years into it now, it's, it's a very new thing and it's giving us the opportunity, humanity the opportunity, to explore our emotional responses to life and see what effect that's having on our mindsets. We have lots of established ways of thinking, lots of what we call mindsets, and it's how we're going to allow ourselves to change those uh, through our emotional body. So the experiences and the understanding of these, really, when you look at Two, it's about the emotional. Well, we always associate water with the emotional. So we're going into the deep watery realms in this, this period of, of evolution and humanity. So as we go in and experience and understand in depth our emotional our aspects which move heighten the emotional towards a universal love. That's what we're looking at. And the result will be a merging of our conflicting North, South, East, West consciousness. That's what we're looking to happen. So loosening up those very separative illusionary mindsets that we have created and we've had to go through. Now it's time to see ourselves as one. You, you know what water does. It unifies everything. It th Everything dissolves into each other. That's the process that we're looking at in this thousand years that we're going through. So let's think about what that means. The, that bringing together, that merging of all that conflict that we've seen going on for so long now, takes us onto that middle path of light and peace. So we need to call, pause for a moment and just think of the human condition and remember, was there a message that came in? just over 2,000 years ago? Do we remember that message? It was all about love. So it's time to think and remember that. So we have this glorious epiphany of the one life. This is, this is what we are really, although we're not, we haven't kind of consciously uh, accepted that. We're still working in very separative ideas. But really this is what we're doing, is bringing together this one life, embracing the scientific and the spiritual aspects. We live on a jewel of a planet. And this ought to bring us to the realization that only brotherhood and cooperation with each other will save the day. This entire living systemic organism that is actually our solar system and, and even beyond that, the universe, 
to bring all that into our consciousness. So can we tread the path of love and wisdom that this millennium is asking us to? I'm just going to go to a slide now and show you this. Let's see, slideshow. So here we are, this is 2000. It's really asking us to bring the potential of love into being through our conscious minds and hearts. Can we tread this path? Let's look at what it is. It's a binary energy. That's two, of course. Love is the quality of space the life-building elements that hold all life in the depths of its very nature. Care and protection. And then we have wisdom. It's that inherent self-knowledge of the full experience of love and life. I mean, that's those two together. That's all we need, really. So let's look at another slide. So here we are, we've, we've come into this brand new millennium. We've gone through the karmic cycles. Now these would be from 2011 to 2021. We're still, this is the very last karmic year, 2022. I'm looking at the 11 and the 21 and the 22 here. It's, it really isn't surprising that those first 21 years of the new millennium, we have looked at polarization in a big way, global, national, political, religious, all those entities have strengthened their hardened separative slogans around the world. The world has become more and more polarized. So we can see that the world actually, at this point, we really do need that change because we've got this brand new energy, the new master of the dance, 2000, that's giving us that opportunity to make those changes. So it's time now to look, to measure, because measuring is a function of the two, measuring the space, it's a quality of the two, and examine. How do we measure? We look. We look to see what's happening. We examine what we have done and what we have understood so far. It's not all dark. So when you see the light coming in, then you know what tells you that is those grassroots of humanity who mobilize for causes greater than their own individual benefit. So going for a greater benefit of the whole of humanity. That's when you know that the light is true and real. But of course there's a lot that isn't doing that, which needs to be transformed. How do we bring in those changes? So transformation starts with the depths of the birthlight of the soul. We call it soul, we could call it our essence, we could call it our inner life, our deepest aspect of self. From that deepest aspect, we can witness and watch and observe. We have to observe because it's there, it's what we have come from. We watch the old ways, the plundering of resources, the persecution of minority groups and the suppression of free speech. We are seeing this. It's come out very clearly now. We can recognize these 
as being the last gasps of the imperative empire mentality. This is Ray One energy. It's gone round and round the world many times. It's the will to be, but without a consciousness, without that true consciousness, without that self-conscious attitude. That's what has caused this. So bringing in the consciousness and the beingness of the soul actually can change this. We are part of humanity. We are in it. We can change what's happening. So we've come through these karmic years from 2010 to now. And now we're in the last year of the karmic calls to reason. Reason being the, the use of mind and heart. It is our time now. And it's not surprising that everything, all those dark shadows are coming up to the light to be seen. I mean, we only have to look back and see how we sorted out that 2008 global financial crash. It caused a lot of turbulence and suffering, but we, we didn't handle it. We didn't really take it to that new place that it should have gone to. All that blame was attributed and the merry-go-round of deceit and greed carried on. So those karmic years, those cycles that we've been going through now from 2011 to 2021 have given us reason to doubt the sanity of some of our leaders and, and to look at their responses to the obvious destruction of the very fabric that sustains all life. It's crazy. Of course, we do understand when you look at the, the way energy works that we have to experience life to the breaking point, limits. We have to go right to the limits of where we can go before we actually begin to understand how and why and when, before we can actually find those answers. So we are at that limit. We are at that place of breaking through. So the breaking through is actually going back to our source and actually looking at this world that we're in. It, it's an amazing world. It's magnificent, really. There's all those trillions and trillions of organisms exchanging information, giving their substance to create this amazing life on Earth. This is real. This is not virtual. This is our life. And we know that our stratosphere has reached a level of pollution because of those who want to play with the digital empire building. We see they, they dream of going to other planets, of conquering and plundering new resources in, in other parts of the solar system. Oh my goodness! <laughs> the children of humanity must stop playing with these toxic toys. What do we have? We actually have that beauty in the world. So they must be taught to run with the wind in the hills, to breathe the warm soil of the forest, and to swim the rivers of clear water. And only then will the fire of purification burn in their blood, and they'll put the bright computer, which we have this amazing gift, the bright computer, which is better than computers, of our minds 
at the service of life on earth. So let's have a look and welcome in 2022. We're looking at the highest level of what is the deepest aspect here, of what the potential is of this year, because it's a very special year. We have the goddess in the 20. She holds the realization of the promise to offer this super instrument, the brain of mankind, which is capable of receiving flashes of enlightenment. What do those do? There's light coming in to further that unfolding of our minds, to expand our minds. This is, this is here, this opportunity. And the mind of humanity has to reflect life back to its creator, to create that spiritual communication between the created life and the reality of the idea of life. So there's a, a point of magic that can happen, heaven and earth coming together. So in this very early phase of 2022, 20, we're only a couple, two or three months into this cycle, what have we got? We've got a warning, haven't we? We've got an alarm bell. Fire, flood, drought, famine, war, disease, all these things warning us, waking up the giddy, sleepy heads of humanity that just want to stay where they are. So will the clock of time be heard? Will that 22-4 energy which comes, as you see, from the last two numbers of our year. This is the Master Builders. It's a powerful number. It's, it's a powerful energy, I should say, because that's what the number represents, is the energy behind it. That energy is saying, we have the seed. We can plant. It, we may not see how the how the plant is going to grow and germinate because we might not be here, but we can plant the seed now. So this is, are we going to respond to that call to bring that mind into a place where it can expand, where it can rise? Well, only time can tell. If we can get to the end of this millennium, then we will have done something, won't we? We'll still be here. Okay, another aspect of 2022. If we add the 20 plus the 2 plus the 2, we get a 24-6. Time and space. This is a number of alchemic transformation. So again another opportunity, a time of change. But have a look, there's the polarity there, isn't there? A time of tremendous change, or possibility of change. We know that, we can see it all around us, that potential. So there's that all change, or the other side of it is saying do not disturb. So here we have the danger of do not disturb could be just sitting on the fence because the wisdom hasn't quite come in, but it could be an excuse for inaction. As we sit on the wall, we're overwhelmed by that great responsibility of making a decision, who do we work for? Do we work with that universal transmutative quality of the great life that we live in and have our being in? Or shall we just keep sitting on the fence? 
So if we look at this 20, 22, 24, 6, we see we've come, and this is the last of the karmic numbers, 22. So we've come to the end of our karmic lesson. Something has been completed, and we've just begun a new course. We've just begun the new 2,000-year class. So we are a bit bewildered still, this cosmic bewildered exploration, and we don't quite know if we're going to make it to the exam. So will this kickstart our true survival intelligent instinct this time, bringing us into that place where we can recognize that principle of we are one life? Okay, so we're going to look a bit deeper at the 2022 with the idea of the name of it. So let me just show you the slide. 2022, right? You can see all the numbers in there. Um, so what we're looking at it why we're looking at it like this is a different look. It's to look at it from the past point of view and from the karmic idea of the karmic entity and the characteristic qualities. So it measures and it helps us to know what to expect with what is going on. So the hope is to understand why all this is happening to retrace the how we got here and basically start to clean up the mess. So the, the way I have calculated that, or has been calculated, I don't know if you can see the other numbers on the side, um, is by looking at first of all the vowels at the top and if you add up all those vowels they come to the number 50 five, right? And then you look at all the consonants below and add those up and they come to 42. And then adding them up to get a fusion and a sum out of that we have 92, 11, 2. You can, and then there it is, the year's expectation. Um, I'll just show you the slide of where that came from. No, no, not that one, this one. Okay, so you can see there the letters and numbers and how, how that's all worked out. So it's quite simple, um, but I can always come back to that later um, to see how we calculated those numbers. Okay, so um, coming back to our 2022, if we look at these numbers individually, we've got 50, we've got 42, we've got 92, we've got 11 and 2. So let's look at them all here and see what they signify, what, what they represent as energy. So we have a lovely one here in the 50. We have the messenger between heaven and earth. The five we always see as mind. So it's here we're looking at that potential coming through into the mind. You see that zero in coming into the mind to expand the mind into the universal. So we're moving here from the limited uh, exploits of intellect into the idea of intuition or receiving messages from on high. This is the path to the universal mind. Experience is all very important. And so you can understand that a certain amount of anger, anxiety and procrastination may be part of this expression. This very much relates to the human condition. Okay. When we look at 42, life's answer to the universe. 
42, uh, I don't know if you know the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, but that was the, the answer that was given uh, in the story. They found this big computer and, and gave it the answer was 42 is life's answer to the universe. It's a lovely number. It's a reflection of the love wisdom. You can see the two there bringing in the love wisdom into the structure of the four. It's, and the four is very much to do with humanity. Humanity being not special, but useful. It doesn't put us in charge, but it gives us great responsibilities of husbandry, of looking after life on earth. And it's asking us, that too is coming into the fore, is asking us to give up the conflict. Just give in to the wisdom of your heart. And when we've added these two together, of course, we get a 92. Teacher of soul's inspiration. Bringing in that inspiring higher energy in and and bringing it out as an inspiration. And then with the 11, we have inspiration, the prophet's inspiration. Let's think, though, prophets can be quite rigid. So what we have here is looking at it from the point of view of an understanding of live and let live, not to dominate, not to be tyrannical over anything, but rather live and let live. And then we have it all coming down to a number two again. Here we are, the ocean of hidden interconnectivity. Ah, this is where we have to lose ourselves in the depths so that we can find that silver thread of our souls bringing together the polarity, bringing together the mind and the heart and finding a way to use our emotional body in a wise and constructive way, not to torture us, not to torture others, but, but a wise way so that we will have the courage to hear the message as a family, the family of man going back to our source. So this could be an incredible breakthrough. So we're going to look at the months, a journey through the months of the 12 months, some of which we have already been through, uh, but the ones to come as well. So I've used this same system here to find the numbers of the names of the months. So we have for the vowels 12, 3, and we have for the consonants 15, 6. So there you can see on the side those two are added up and find a 27, 9. We then add them to the year, the numbers that we got from the year, and you can see where the numbers come from. So the first of all, we're looking at that 27.9 energy. It's full of zeal, inner potential for change. Everything's come home to roost. So we have the meeting with the 92.11.2. There can be a lack of trust. The prophet might not want to hear the new call and then we see in the 62.8 the possibility of breaking up the spell of inaction. There's a difficult situation, but there's the possibility of breaking through. It might feel like an impasse. And we find that breaking point in the 57. 12, 3. That's where the fusion and the explosion comes in. So we need to focus 
on that fusion. And we know when you have fusion, it isn't just going to be nice and easy. Sometimes things have to come together that cause explosions. So there's always a clash of thundering force before we get a revelation. And then the birth of light can come through. So I don't know if you experienced your January like this, but it certainly felt like it to me. Then we have February. Movement of the karmic energy of 26. You can see that here. Towards re-evaluation. The 8 always brings in, look at that 26 there too, that 8 always brings re-evaluation. We have to stop and re-evaluate. Why did we do that? This is humanity. Why did that happen? Why did I make that happen? So the caretaker, which is the 42.6, and the light of wisdom, 92.11.2 energies, won't be afraid of the conflict and won't hide the problem. So the right use of energy and hard work can bring the higher concept to bear on the problem and find a solution so that things can change. Well, there is a call for wise leadership. We can see that clearly in our world situation. The people are asking for wise leaders. Is anyone there? <laughs> we have to dig deep in ourselves to find what we what qualities we need in a leader so that we can find the right leaders. The wise leader knows that if there's a trial or a difficulty, that's only a step nearer to the top of the mountain. In other words, in the middle of a crisis, the realization of truth can break through those old patterns. The wise leader would know that. We need to find them. March, we're in March right now. So here we have the promise, we, we know there's a promise of spring, uh, of the gift of life, rebirth, bit of sunshine coming in, some soul searching. When we look at that uh, metaphorically or inside that sun coming in, it's, it's like the, the light coming into us to find our souls. Some soul searching might bring some insights to those secrets that we're holding. Basically, we have to hold on to those deep, simple truths. They may not be nice. We, it's about the way we've treated the world so far, but we have to face them. And in facing those darkest moments, we then realize that we have a much deeper love for life than we knew. So this is the sword of truth, breaking the heart through to find the wisdom. So wisdom cooperation wakes up the spirit of humanity. Let's do it. Don't let's be stopped. We can do it. April, the light shines bright at the end of the tunnel. Well, hopefully it does. We need to see that new project. The blueprint is visible now. So can we hear all that planning, those new 
paradigms for humanity? Can we crystallize that true life? Collective compassion. This is the opportunity to rise to that challenge. And only this will break the glass ceiling of the old order. So we're just coming into April. Keep that in mind. May. Here we are. Will we rise to the opportunity to use our skills and our intelligence? We have masses of experience. Can we use it for others' benefit? There's a lot of ideas of service coming in here in that 46.10.1, new ways of service. Can our devotion to service help us understand that our personal mindset is maybe we need some security. So we need to give up any needs that we might have just to be clear and use those skills for others' benefit, not just for ours. So life is a divine gift. We are here to serve, to share, to nurture, to guide and heal. We need to listen to the teachers in any field who have reconnected with that old natural wisdom solution for all those new problems that we've created come back to the natural way. June. Well, here we've got lots of six coming up. You can see that six there. So it's the sixth month as well. So this is truly all change. It really means it now in this year of the last call for service. Perhaps we can find some enthusiasm here in the air. It's a month of coming together, of marriage, of fecundity. We've had the May blossom sprinkling the earth with hope. So now what words or contracts will be sealed? Contracts for peace? So many opportunities for networking. Let's hope enough reflection will guide those choices of new alliances. We might see many other old promises broken, but the new alliances can come up. July. Well, the fruit can only come from its flower on the tree, so we're looking here. Which seed did we sow? Did we think we planted a white rose of peace and then found a red poppy instead? The answer will have to appear in the clarity of our reflection. We have to ponder, time to ponder on our honesty, on our resolution to dissolve conflict all that conflict that's based on self-protection, idealism, nationalism, or is it based on that or is it based on pure service to life? Be honest with ourselves. August. Retreat within. Stay focused on hope. Open your mind. There's a lot of goodness and resilience of life. If we do fall into the dark, then that's okay too, because it'll help you to see where we all come from. And then we can come into the world better with that selflessness of the soul. Don't be afraid of the dark. And join the great one soul. September. Well, we've got 
to the beginning of the end of the year here, will the separative mindset still carry on, still prevail? We see there is no doubt that the nations of the world must develop their inclusivity and stop being separative. We have to accept the differences. Vive la différence concept. This is the winning ticket. Generosity. That sh let that generosity shine on the world. True causes, true visions. Never mind this small-minded chicanery that we've been chumbling over all this time. It's time to change our very idea of love and bring that overflowing back into the old simplicity of the old ways of nature, the wisdom of Mother Nature. October. The brave new world that we're in is calling for redemption, calling for us to see things differently. But of course that's going to meet a lot of resistance. The old world doesn't like it. The old world says, oh let's carry on finding solutions by plundering the earth, finding more precious material and bringing it up and using it for our own good, for, our, for money. But of course if we cut at the world and make a new wound, it's folly. But those the old world doesn't see that. They tell it, it tell us it works because it makes money. No. So we need to confront that and release that shadowy world of greed into the into the light of day. Let's remember truth always prevails. And we have to check every unrealistic supposition that needs to crash before more catastrophic results come in. The important message here is necessity is the mother of invention. So let's hold the vision which is in tune with the need to serve responsibly. We're on our knees here. It's the reinvention that's required. No plasters to make us not see what's going on. No, it needs to be open. So the full force of that is, is behind the picture. It's, it's our minds that need to change. So it's a clear choice. November. Well, we've been through this year of change. Great changes have happened. We're collecting the harvest now. It's brought in, it's collected, it's measured, and maybe it's better than we expected. But the question arises, is the world really learning generosity, compassion and altruism? Are we still waiting to wake up from the old dream? Are we really seeing the beginning of new humanity working together for the one love of life? Big questions. And now December, the twelfth month. Well, we've got a seven here. You can see 37, 10, 1. That seven might still be afraid. It has to let go of control so as to reveal the true nature of life. It's the only way that the event of some long-term goals can come into being. So new hum humanity will have to hold very firmly onto its inner guidance, onto its soul work, as there may be many obstacles on the way. It's a rebirth, the 
the new responsibility. And when we look at that 37 again, the seven brings in the magic. Once it can stop being afraid, it brings in that responsibility, the true magic, the one who helps others selflessly, the one who has acquired mastery, giving his skills in service. It's only a beginning. The dawn is not yet fully revealing the sun yet. There's only the pale shadow of its light, but there is the promise. Hello. <laughs> so I have a short, uh, I don't know if you want to ask any questions or if I can give you a short little exercise for yourself to actually uh, see your, your possibilities for this year, your personal possibilities of the soul work that you have to do this year. Would you like to do that? It's a simple okay. exercise. Um, but to do it, we, we need to go back to this um, slide. Let's find it again. Let's go back. Uh, going right back. This one. So I'm going to ask you to take your first name, your Christian name, your forename, whatever you call it, um, which we call the personal intent, the actual number that comes from it, and convert the letters of your name into numbers. So there you have the, the chart to do it. Okay, would you like to do that now? Some of you may know the, that chart already and might not need to use it, but uh, I'd put it there for those that don't. You don't need to worry about vowels and consonants for this one. Just put them in one row. Mm. So I'll just pres presume you've done it, okay? And we go to the next slide. Ah, there we go. Let's go there. Okay, so this is the example, just to clarify. When you've got those numbers lined up, then add them all together. And whatever result you've got, write down. And then if it's a double, it will be a double digit, most likely. Um, you add the the two digits together to get your final number, which is in this case is a three. And then the idea is you take the number, which we were looking at before, of the the year name which was 92.11.2, and you add your result to it, which is a 3 in this case, which then becomes 95. Again, you reduce, becomes a 14, and then you reduce again, becomes a 5. So in this example, the place in the great collective work this year carries the quality of the vibration of number five. And that's your answer. I'll, I'll give you a, a, a template to look at. Um, the, the number from your first name is chosen because it helps to clarify from a soul point of view what you're going to apply this year. It helps you to recognize and, so to speak, unfold your wings. And then when we're looking at the number of the year, which is the great karmic wind that's blowing through, it this, this is the wind that's like the breath of God, if you like, that 
movement of the wind can actually come under your wings and help you fly. So if you can give yourself to that movement that the year is bringing, it helps us to know that. It helps us to know and tells us what to go for and broadens your appreciation of, of your inner wisdom so that you can go along and use that wisdom along with the group wisdom. So you see it's bringing you into the year, the essence of the year, and, and you can fly with it. So I'll just go on to the next slide which gives you the result. So these are all the numbers that you might have found you had as a single digit and you can see what the movement is, is, is saying. So with the one, if you had a one, then you've got the intent and action coming through, which is a good, it means that wind of action is blowing you to make some sort of movement. And then in the, if it's the two, then we've got the movement reveals the light and taking the measure of its fundamental material. When we come to the three, we have the light in action. We look at the plan, the blueprint. So that creates, is a very creative energy. So if you have a three, you know that you're mapping out the ideas so that you can move with them. And then the four, we have crystallization. So that idea of whatever you're doing, the purpose is to, is to make something viable and practical. And that's also to do with your receptivity as, as a mind. So it's, it's not about a closed box, but opening up that mind to be creative. And then the five, once the mind is opened up, well, my goodness, it's going to explore. It's going to try and find out how everything works, why everything does what it does, looking in all directions. So that would be the quality with the five. And then the six, it's about reflection. So there's been an infinity of experiences and bringing in that compassion and then reflecting on how you can give that compassion in service to others, to the planet, to life, reflecting on that. Seven is fusion, so that bringing together the, the, the self, and the little self, the big, the soul and the little personality, bringing those together so that you can be a witness on behalf of light. Eight, we've got the spiritual guidance coming in, the transformation, getting rid of what's not real, the idea of unfolding that universal energy which is in your mind, otherwise you wouldn't be alive, bringing out the diamond mind in you. And then the nine, there's only one thing to contemplate now, it's just to observe. It's all about as above, so below. We're at a completion point here. The idea of knowing yourself fully comes in and then just letting yourself be forgotten into that great collective energy, disappearing into the potential again. So whatever you had will be bringing a message of how you can fly this year. It's a message for you personally from the year as being a collective unit in humanity. Okay, so did you find the message? <laughs>
Bernie's, could I ask um, if you can hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Um, how does this number differ from what we normally look at, which is the um, day of birth and month, and then the number of yeah. the year? I mean, well, you're taking a much higher stance here. You're taking the stance of the skills that are needed in in the personal person in order to express the soul. So it's it's not just your experiences we're looking at. We're looking at the movement of energy from the higher source, how that moves you. So it's 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 a much more elevated idea. Mm -hmm. So it, it it's like the aspiration or the inspiration, uh, rather than just the practical seeing what you have to face in the year, but seeing how you can fly with the year. Okay. Yeah. Well, I got the seven. You got the seven, right? So that's the human unit becoming a willing witness on behalf of the light to reveal wisdom in action. Anybody else like to share what they got? Yeah? Out of five. Sorry, I didn't work out properly how to get from my number to your number. And my number was 22. And you wanted us to get to a, a, a single digit. I didn't work out how to do that. Sorry. Okay. So it's very simple in, in one way. You just add the two and the two. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. And you've got a four. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Can you sum up, because we've lost that chart, what does a four mean? Okay. So let's, shall I go back to it? Well, the four is the crystallization yeah so it's like the practical crystallization into a, something viable so that's what the year would be asking for from you um but you would did you add the the year number to it as well or was that just your, your oh. so if you add the 92 and the 4 you'll get 96 right and 96 reduces to a 15 and then to a six. So we'd be looking at six, reflection, looking at service, compassion, reflecting on service, on, on the service that, that you can, the service that you can be, well, you can be of service to the planet, to humanity, whatever you're reflecting on that, yeah. That makes sense so far. Good. Yeah. And don't forget, we're looking from the essence. We're looking from a deeper point of view than just uh, personality. We're going somewhere. We're flying here into into the higher realms. <laughs> Very interesting. <laughs> Any other questions? Yeah. Or any thoughts of, of did it did it surprise you the message? Or, or confuse you or anything? Did you I'm just wanting to change the spelling of solar system to S O U L A R system. S A U L No S O U. Oh, you. Solar. Solar. solar system. Yes, that's nice. A solar Thank you. system. Yeah. Yes, I get you. Good <laughs> idea. It is that because, of course, even if we look at it as solar, that comes from the word from soul, from the sun, and mm -hmm. the sun represents the soul anyway. Yeah. So it's in there in any way. Yeah. But, but also, like, solo is that uniqueness but it's also that aloneness that we're yeah trying to sort of put behind us in a way because we need that unification so get rid yeah. of the solo and put it as soul s-o-u-l yes that's lovely yeah yes. Play on words. 
That's really mm. nice. Yeah. There's all sorts of thoughts that can come in when you think yeah. about these things. Yes. Think about the words because words are quite powerful, aren't they? Oh, absolutely. Very. Yeah. Yeah. And and you yeah. know. And I don't know if any other language is, is the same as ours where we can't switch it round quite as much as ours with just a single change of letter or emphasis, you know. There's yes. a lot of different words. The English language is very rich in many ways because it, it's, so. it is quite um, flexible in that way. And it, this yeah. system works very well. With, with yeah, you know, it's like, like the word um, alone, if you split it, it's all one. Yes. Yes. It's not about being lonely, it's about yes. being all one and inclusive yes. with, with the all. Yes, it's, it's, yeah, not it's, a lovely language. it's not to say that the English language is better than any other language, not, not at all. It's, oh, no. just, it's just that it, it's usable, you know. It's Very much, yeah, you language. can manipulate it. <laughs> yes, I mean other languages might be much more beautiful or poetic or whatever, but there is that kind of use that comes in as a practical thing. Definitely. And the fact that most, uh, you know, that it is, it has turned out to be the most uh, spoken language in the world. Yeah, probably a good reason for that. <laughs> yeah. So in these, um, yeah. if you get a, a master number such as uh, 11, would you still, would you, I mean, obviously you can reduce it to it too. But, um, you know, it's not on your list there. No, it's not on the list. I mean, just to be, uh, yes, because it is an 11, so we could see it as that double one. But the fact that it, it needs that two is so important. And, and also the fact that that relates it to the, the work that we're doing. It's, it's not the profit is the 11, but... The idea of the prophet can be quite hard and and rigid uh, until you find that lovely two that comes from it, and that softens that hardness, so that it brings the message, but it brings it with love, not just you know. <laughs> and I don't mean sentimental love because the message could still be quite tough. It's not sentimental when you look at unconditional love, but it is, uh, it's got that real uh, wisdom with it as well. Dear old Boris, uh, at the 38.11.2, just quickly calculated, so hopefully this might help him and the country this year. Oh, oh yes. <laughs> well, we'll have to see. We do need to seek leaders who are wise this year. And we may not find them, but if we have the intent of knowing what we need from them, or knowing what, I mean, there's so much coming from the people at the moment. There's so mm. much energy coming through, isn't there? It, it's, it's never been like this before, really. It's, it's so, uni so much global, isn't it, energy? It's not just one country, but all the countries coming together. So mm. it's the people really that need to bring up this consciousness. It's not, we're not going to get it from our leaders at the moment. Mm. Well, people do refer to it as not just a great reset, but the great awakening. So, yeah, uh... yeah, yeah. It's both, isn't it? You know, I mean, it, the Great Reset is is the name that's given to the <laughs> the sort of digital whole stuff. Um, but at the same time, you, you have this awakening and people seeing the truth behind. Because, of, because it's all so obvious and so... <laughs> so money money based and greed based and you know self gratification based yeah yeah 